We're counting down 10 board games that have been getting a lot of attention this past month, and we're starting right now. Hey everybody, welcome to this month's countdown of the top 10 board games that have been getting the most attention on the BGG hotness list. And this month we got kind of a special episode because I am actually joined, Yes. actually not, I'm not joined in my studio, no. I'm joining you in, in your studio, studio. But Mark Street from Board Game Corner. Hey in, guys. So the reason I'm here, I'm actually usually in Oregon, but yes. I'm here in Colorado with you right. because this weekend we are participating in the Colorado Gamers Extra Life event yep. to raise money for the Extra Life Charity. It's going to be exciting. I'm, we're going to have a lot of people in town and it's gonna be great it's so. yeah i'm really looking forward to it and if you would like to support this great charity that helps out uh children across the nation and the That's globe right. i'll put a link to the colorado gamers extra life charity page in the description below nice so for anyone joining us for the first time, this countdown mm -hmm. is going to recap the games that have had the aggregate highest ratings right. on the Board Game Geek hotness list for the past 30 days. Right. I was going to ask yes. if you wanted to guess each one before oh we start. <laughs> but, <laughs> You're coming in totally uh, blind, wow, totally, totally blind. cold, but you, what, what's your best guess for number 10? Uh, oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> How many board games can there be? Yeah, that's the problem, right? <laughs> Massive Darkness? Oh, close. Well, and by close, I mean no. Okay. Well, it has a similar engine, I was thinking, you know. Number 10 is Gaia Project, oh. which is based off the Terra Mystica Mist engine. engine, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Where Terra Mystica is okay. set in kind of a fantasy setting right. with a static board. Mm -hmm. Gaia Project is set in space with a modular board. Right, cool. Yep. So they've that taken. Sounds awesome. It does. It does. Yeah. I'm actually. Sign me up. <laughs> okay, uh, I have. All right. I believe that Gaia Project is uh, not released yet, but it is yeah. supposed to come out oh, any any moment, I believe. Right, it's soon, right? It's got to be soon. It's got to be the, really I soon. I thought I saw it was for the holidays or something like that. Yeah, so I, I would say sometime, hopefully within the next 30 to 45 days, I'm hoping. Yeah. But you, you, know, you never know. Yeah. But uh, So it should be coming out soon, and it takes Terra Mystica, then just expands on the idea, refines it, streamlines it. Good, and. I frankly feel like it needs it. <laughs> oh, there you go. Problem solved. solved. <laughs> okay. And it comes in at number 10. Nice. Cool. All, All right. right. So, Mark, would you like to take a stab at guessing number nine? Oh, boy. N any more hints? Um, this is a game I knew nothing about before I saw it on the BG really? on this list. So, okay. number nine on our list is Noria. I don't even heard of this game. Okay, well, let me tell you about Noria. Yeah, please. Okay. Noria is the first game from designer Sophia Wagner. Okay. Who was the winner of the Spiel des Jahres Fellowship in 2015. Okay. And I don't know what that is. <laughs> the publisher's bio about this mm -hmm. says that the talented young author created an entirely new steampunk universe specifically mm. for this game. Wow, that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it features artwork by Michael Menzel really? and Clemens Franz, who have helped bring her vision to life. At the center of the game is a mechanism they're saying is kind of a new concept called okay. wheel building. Wheel building. Wheel huh? building. Each player has an action wheel consisting of three rings with slots for a number of different action discs that will be with it. Okay. And over the course of the game, the players are going to try and obtain new discs and manipulate the rings of the wheel to optimize their actions that they can take on their oh, turn. Oh, really? That does sound interesting. Sounds very interesting. Yeah, I wonder if they I'm are. Look this up now. Yeah, it looks from the images I've seen, it almost looks like they are concentric mm -hmm. circles in a way. So I don't know if they're rings side by side or if they're kind of they're a, building up three dimensional. Yeah, yeah, or if they're like within each other. Some are small, yeah. some are big. Noria had a previous release date of October. Okay. And so it's either coming out now or coming out very soon. Oh, okay, great. Yep. So that's number look, nine. Look forward to checking that out for sure, man. So I hope it's as innovative as they made it sound. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Number eight on the list is Scythe. Now, Scythe has been on the countdown so often mm -hmm. that a couple months ago I totally ran out of stuff to say about it. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, but, but now, the expansion. Well, I've, I've talked about that. Oh, you too. have to. Okay. <laughs> but, but so I reached out to uh, the designer, Jamie Stegmeyer. Right. And uh, I asked him for, like, if he had anything interesting to say about oh. it. And he did. He oh, provided. Good. Yeah. So here's what, what Jamie got. Jamie himself had to say this. When Chaz invited me to share something about Scythe that I had never discussed before, I decided to look at the photograph I took of an early Scythe playtest. Mm. I found two things there that I had completely forgotten about, because mm. mostly I attribute Scythe's main inspirations to Terra Mystica and Kemet. First, the photo reminded me that Scythe started out as a card-driven game, with each card representing a unique character. Mm -hmm. I think Imperial Settlers was the inspiration for this, even uh, though the cards yeah. in that game were buildings. I can see that. 
Mm -hmm. And secondly, each player started out with villagers, and they could either upgrade villagers to horse cavalry, mm -hmm. then animal cavalry, or they could turn villagers into infantry and then into mechs. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, and he says, I haven't played war bands, but I think it has a similar mechanism. So it may have been the inspiration for me on that. Scythe changed quite a bit over the many months of the design, its development and playtesting and blind playtesting. So while it's nostalgic to look back at the first prototype, I'm glad it evolved into what it is today. And thanks to everyone who's participated in conversations about Scythe. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, looking at Scythe, it kind of blows my mind to think of it as this card-driven game where your units are evolving. I would agree. You know, the, the game has so much going for it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it just, it, every time it's, and it, I love that it, you're just r so engaged. And the player boards are really well done. Unlike some other games we won't mention, <laughs> where pieces float all over the board. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, he did such a good job. I mean, it's so well thought out. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can tell that yeah. everything in there was you know, vetted and tested so much, and it shows. Yep, so. absolutely. And that's why Scythe continues to be on our list this month, coming at number eight this month. Nice. Time. Cool. <laughs> Number seven is a brand new entry that hasn't been on the top 10 before, but I am betting is going to be on the top 10 for quite a while. And you have a guess at All what right. it is. I'm going to take a blind guess. Blind guess. Photosynthesis? No. No. <laughs> but if you want, if it'll make you feel better, I'll change it to photosynthesis. Okay, that'd be good. Okay. <laughs> In, until then, number seven is another Stonemeyer game. Oh, it is. Okay. Charterstone. Charterstone. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, boy. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Charterstone is Jamie Stegmeyer's first take on a legacy, legacy game. game. And yeah. if Scythe is any example, this I... Should be pretty awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. Have, I have high expectations for Charterstone. Yeah. And, uh, in general, mm -hmm. anything coming from Jamie, my expectations are very high. Oh, yes. Oh, so, he, uh, don't disappoint me. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm very much looking forward to trying this one out yes you know but i have to wonder not related to charterstone in particular but is there just starting to be in this glut of legacy games Gl i wouldn't say glut yeah i think a lot of people saw the success of risk and pandemic legacy mm -hmm. and took a stab at it and realized oh this is Ooh. not as easy as it looks right and i think it will kind of fade off a little bit and then slowly kind of build yeah I, I what I'm interested to see about Charterstone myself is if it fixes what unfortunately happened with Seafall. Mm, um, see, uh, I hope so. Yeah, because <laughs> Risk and Pandemic Legacy were built on existing games. Yeah, that, uh, everyone knew. Right. Seafall was its own original game. It was, but Seafall with even without the legacy aspects, I feel could have stood on its own. You're probably right. It was trying to do too much. It was a complex game to begin yeah. with. Yeah. And what Charterstone is said to do is Jamie took the approach of it's a very streamlined, stripped down game. And the legacy elements are what add the complexity, complexity and new rules. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I think with a legacy game, I think that's the approach that yeah. might be a better approach. Yeah, I think that'll be interesting. Um, and again, coming from Jamie, I'm super excited. Oh, yes. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So Charterstone makes its debut yeah. on the countdown at number seven. I figured it was on there earlier than now. Yeah, I've, I didn't realize because there's been so much build up to it. I mm -hmm. thought it would be higher on the list, actually. Yeah, I just it, it finally broke through. I think it's been like in the teens yeah, for a okay. while, but uh, now that it's broken through, I would not be surprised to see it remaining there for yeah. quite a while. Okay, cool. all right, all right, Mark. Number six is a game that is massive. Okay, it is gargantuan. <laughs> gargantuan. It is exponentially huge. Is it Massive Darkness? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so, is it TI4? No. Okay, what? It is Kingdom Death Monster. Oh, right, yes. So, mm -hmm. I recently got to check this out. I didn't get to play yet. But okay, tell me about um, it. A friend who actually designed um, Walk the Plank, he has a copy. Okay. He's bringing it to our Extra Life event, so we're oh. going to try it out. Ooh. So, but it looks very interesting. He was he kind of gave me the rundown. He hasn't put all the miniatures together yet. He just put together what he needs for the first scenarios, right? Mm -hmm. And and this is actually his second copy. He liked it so much they bought it again when they re did the second Kickstarter. I have heard of multiple people yeah. doing that. 
So I'm anxious to play it at Extra Life because it's you wake up and you have no idea what's mm -hmm. happening. And I'm really excited to experience it. It's got, it sounds like it has some really neat storytelling stuff and you have to build out your community and all this. So And I, and I heard it's a it's really a really well-designed game engine, but just brutally difficult yeah. at times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, that's he said his very first play, uh, he had people die like right away. Mm -hmm. That's what I've heard too, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And there must be something with having more than a couple players you have the max player count might be better thing i don't know yeah, how it scales how it scales that yeah. will be interesting to see yeah. yeah but it is you are correct it is a massive box i mean the thing is huge mm -hmm. and uh i'm excited to play it this weekend cool so, me too yeah so that is that is kingdom death monster coming in at Whatever number, number this was. Yeah. Six, right? Six. Number six. It is now. Yes. <laughs> sure. All right, Mark. Okay. Number five is a game that could become massive and is set in a very dark universe. Okay. Massive darkness. No. No. Okay. It's Arkham Horror, the, the oh, LCG. The LCG. Yep. Which is really quite good. Oh, tell me about your experience with it. So, I... Uh, I've only played it a couple times. Okay. So, and it, it always, without, it's hard not to give spoilers because you don't want to give stuff away for this game, but it's one of those games where I'm like, oh, I want to play this again. It, and it, it, for me, who I'm a huge theme guy, okay. it really comes through. And yes. That's what I really look for. That's one of the first things I, when I'm looking at a game, it, it has to have that, what I like to call, tell Randy, it needs to have that suck me in value. Yeah, and if it don't, if a game doesn't grab me like in that first 10, 20 minutes, eh, it's probably an average game for me. And the Arkham Horror LCG did, did yeah, grab, grab me that. right away. Cool. Yeah. Did, with the few games that you've played, have you had a continuity with your character from yes. one game to the next? Yeah, Neat. Yeah. Okay, I've liked that a lot. And you know, you you build your cart, your decks up with whatever whatever you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I I really yeah I'm I'm anxious to play more. Yeah, really. Uh, cool. Maybe we'll do some this weekend. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that would be neat. And uh, I know that there's also additional expansions that are continually yes. coming out. And that's the thing. So, yeah, I can't keep up with it, right? Because, oh, yeah. And there's no reason for me to grab the new stuff yet until I get through the old stuff. That, yeah, that makes, <laughs> yeah. But with everything they're bringing out, it, it seems like they're really setting it up to they be a large ongoing universe. Ongoing. And that's what I, again, I like a lot. Because if you get through the first scenario, I suppose you could jump to any scenario. I don't know that they're all linear. I'll have to look at that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Because you might be able to just jump to any of the expansions. That would be nice if they had yeah. it that way. So yeah. you're, you're not stuck having to get, oh, I got to get that expansion. I got two right. more, but I got to get the earlier one. Right. Cool. So, yeah. And I, I think this is one of Z's favorite games, actually. Is it? Yeah. Well, he's talked about it quite a bit. You know, I, I've never heard anyone say anything but positive stuff about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I really enjoy it. Yeah. And I mean, again, it's one of those games that uh, you could play solo, right? But I prefer to play in a group. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> and of yeah. course, you need a lot more copies of the game for that. But of course, it was a fantasy flight game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's worth it because it's so fun. And I've cool. got the huge play mat for it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, that is a ringing endorsement of your yep. experience with it and explains, you know, a little bit more of why Arkham Horror, the LCG, remains on our list so often. That's right. And this month, it remains at number five. Number five. <laughs> Okay, Mark, now we have entered the top four. Yeah. So what is your guess for the game in spot number four? A blind guess. Blind stab in the dark. A blind massive stab in the oh, dark. Oh, man, there you go again. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make me say it. Every, every guess it from now on is massive darkness. Every guess. Well, this time... It's correct. It didn't pay off again. Uh, uh, the game coming in at number four <laughs> is actually Clans of Caledonia. Oh, really? I have yeah. not played this or seen it. So. Well, let me tell you how it All works. All right, yeah. Okay. It's a mid to heavy weight economic game okay. that's set in the 19th century in Scotland. Oh. Okay. At this time, Scotland has made the transition from an agricultural to an industrial country that heavily relied on trade and export. Okay. So you got all that stuff going on there in the background. You got to work on your food production and feed your populations and work with linens and, you know, make goods out of cotton and stuff like that, raise sheep. And there's lots of all these nice euro -y pieces that are working together to make this game. It seems like it's uh, a sleeper in a way. It's not on a lot of people's radar, but the okay. people who have heard about it are actually getting really excited yeah. about playing it. All right, cool. Well, I look forward to checking it out. Yes. Yeah. So that's number four, Clans of Caledonia. Now we're in the top three. Top three. Okay. So instead of making a guess on three, I'm going to say that in the top three, 
that um, season two pandemic will be in there. I think in the top three, maybe right. uh, Gloomhaven might be in there. Those two are going to be in the top three. I don't know beyond that. I All think, right. I think. All right. All right. Well, number three yes. is number three is terraforming Mars. Oh, mm-hmm. really? Yep. That's still in there. huh? Not only still, but Terraforming Mars is one of only two games that has been in the top ten every single time. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I know. Yeah. And it's over a year, year and a half old. Yep. Yep. And I actually reached out to Stephen Bonacore nice. of Stronghold Games. Yep. And uh, he gave us a quote. So here's what Mr. Bonacore All right. had to share with us about Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars was first pitched to Stronghold Games in late 2014. Wow. And Stephen just loved the idea from the beginning. Okay. Okay. The ability to combine hard science Uh and set this game on a direct path that humanity is going to be moving into anyway was a really neat idea that intrigued him. Absolutely. So he played the game extensively and worked very closely with Frix Games to make improvements in how it played Mm -hmm. and work out all the kinks. And uh, Frix wanted the game to come out at Essen 2015, but... Stronghold decided that they didn't believe it was ready yet, so they continued developing it for over a year, and by Gen Con 2016, it was ready to come out in English. So they took this game, and they said, you know what, no, let, 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 let's pull it back. Yeah. Instead of just releasing it at that level, they continued to tool on it for like 12 more months. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, I man, that game is just so fun to play. And you recently oh, yes. did a component-related episode about upgrading terraform mars yes i did a component proponent where yes. i you know, upgraded the components and everything so but there's a lot of neat things that people are doing with that game yes just on their own mm-hmm. outside of any anything you know there's, there's some really neat 3d pieces oh yes the 3d model yeah, stuff i found for really it. cool mm-hmm. um i would love to see some of that get incorporated for real down the road or yeah. something like in a special edition version or something that would be so cool right, right? that would really take that game to the next level yeah it would yep so that's Terraforming Mars, still on the countdown, and edging its way back up to number three, three. this month. Wow. So for numbers one and two, okay. there has been a battle for like the past four months for the number one and two position. Really? So uh, yeah. So uh, take your guess. What do you think is going to come in at number two? Gloomhaven's been around on that list a bunch. I'm going to say Gloomhaven's at number two. Okay. No. Oh, it's number one? Massive Darkness, Darkness also Slow isn't Slow. number two. <laughs> <laughs> no. Number two, slipping back from number one yeah. from the last like, two or three months to number two is The Seventh Continent. Seventh Continent, yeah. Mm-hmm. This game has been just getting so much buzz yeah, and so much discussion. Awesome. I know. I've played like uh, 14, 15 hours of it. Oh, okay. Tell, tell me about your experience yeah, so on this. This game, you know, people talk about Time Stories being, oh, it's like a choose your own adventure. No. Seventh yeah. Continent is like a choose your own adventure book. It really, really is. It made me feel like when I was a kid getting a new new book like that, you know, and, cool. and going through it. And it really has that feel. And the I love that all the little map pieces. At first I was like, why is everything so tiny? Because they really want you to explore and check ah. it out. They even comes with a magnifying glass to pull a tile <laughs> and look at. Yeah, it's really cool. And I love the thematic story. And even when we fail, like we did, um, oh, we fa- we're in this. I can't. So again, another game. I can't. So many spoilers. But um, we found this really neat area. And we were like in the middle of it and we died. Oh. And we're like, no, because we wanted to keep exploring. <laughs> so, yeah. It, now, were you able to use the game save system it has? Yeah, to... so we played it over a series of four or five nights. Oh, wow. So, okay, so that 14 we, hours are spread out spread over out. a week yeah. or so. Yeah, so. Cool. And it, we actually played it over like four weeks. Wow. So, so with the, the safe system, did that make it really easy to pick up? Yeah, where, it was awesome. Oh, so it works. Then. Yeah, it works really well. It's pretty neat how... You know, you just it tells you what cards go where, and you put them in a nice divider area. And uh, yeah, they they sent me a copy. We reviewed it on our first on the board game corner, the very first mm-hmm. podcast we had. Uh, mm-hmm. Ben and I, uh, I liked it a little bit better than Ben did, mm-hmm. uh, but it, he likes it as well. And we uh, we had just a really good time with this game. Bruno, one of the designers, mm-hmm. gave us a quote for nice. this episode awesome. too. Yeah. Uh, I, I asked him if there was anything special about Seventh Continent that he wanted to say. Right. And he wrote back and he said, all I can say, and you can quote me on this, is that 
we are simply blown away by the support that we've received from the gaming community. That's awesome. Our first campaign was amazing, but even it pales compared to their second campaign they just finished. Right. We're touched that people are so excited about a game that had its humble beginnings in our childhood, and we really cannot thank them enough for giving us the means to make all of this happen. And especially big thank you goes out to all those who have backed both projects. We could not have done this without people like yourselves. That's really thank nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the well deserved success is well deserved. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's really neat to see. you can tell that yeah. these people. It was like their childhood dream, yeah. their big you know ambitious project, and it's so neat to see it getting so much success and praise and coming in at number two this month. Nice. All right, Mark. Last chance, just to get something right. <laughs> it's got to be Gloomhaven. It's got to be Gloomhaven. What if I told you it was Massive Darkness? Oh, I would be shocked. Well, <laughs> no need to be shocked because you were right. <laughs> it is Gloomhaven. It's Gloomhaven. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Massive Darkness edition. <laughs> Yes, it's Gloomhaven. The Gloomhaven is the other game that has been on the countdown every single Same time. time. Yeah. And it, it did go down to about number two. I was watching the hotness list this throughout this past month, and it did actually drop down to like five at some point, but it's been so high so often right. that the overall aggregate keeps it at number one. That's that's amazing. Yep. What, what's your experience with Gloomhaven, Ben? I have zero experience. I've oh. only seen it. I've never gotten to play. I know. Oh, yeah. I really want to play. I have heard nothing but good stuff from everybody I know that owns it. And Isaac, the developer yeah. of, of Gloomhaven, actually sent me a oh. bit of trivia oh, about good. Gloomhaven. Well, which was really, Yeah. So here's what Isaac had to say. Isaac sent me this little image okay. of one of the, well, the, the actual builds, the sculpts nice. of one of the figures. And he said, when I originally conceived the Savas race, the sentient rock people, most notably embodied by the Cragheart, mm -hmm. I wanted them to actually be much smaller, around four feet tall. I even had a sculpt made of the Cragheart at that same little four foot tall height, but in the end decided that he needed to just be much more massive and yeah. physically imposing. So he went through all of the trouble to actually have the sculpt made. Wow. And then said, no, ditched it and actually had the whole thing That's remade. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. I've seen the sculpts and they're amazing. I know, yeah. yeah. And to actually get one done like that and decide, nope, throw it out and make it again. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I believe I was watching the Essen coverage, right? And I'm, Gloomhaven sold like crazy. Oh and yeah, flew off the shelf. So mm -hmm. and and you know what? Deservedly so. Yep. Because it has hung on to our countdown and it has clawed its, its way, way back back, yeah. back to number right? one. I don't actually own a copy, otherwise I probably would have played it already. But. I would be playing it right now. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> what we'd be doing right now. <laughs> So there you go. There is your list of the top 10 most popular board games as of November 2017. 10 great games minus Massive Darkness. Minus Massive Darkness. <laughs> I'm never sure it would be down on the list somewhere by you, now. You know what? Let's take a look real quick. Let's see. Where is it? Bonus. Bonus. Oh! Master number Dark 11. number 11. <laughs> <laughs> so close to the top 10. So close. You know, so in a way, in a way point for mark that's right you, it was I, so knew close. It was close. Yeah. I knew it was close i knew it was close all right so mark as we wrap up tell mm -hmm. us where we can find you ah so you can find us on twitter board game corner um and on instagram but instagram is bg corner because i couldn't secure board game corner <laughs> okay and then of course on facebook and all this play but every time i post it'll filter through all the social medias and also now randy and i and well Anne or whoever's part of my team we're going to start doing um we are we have started doing the dice tower previews nice so uh, for folks looking to do kickstarter videos and and crowdfunded videos uh we will show the game and do an overview and, and you know flavor. What? there's a, a lot of the games that appear on the top 10 from the hotness are kickstarter, our games. kickstarter games maybe i can get your insight on some of those in the exactly. months to come exactly that'd be great that would be really cool and finally we have a brand new podcast that mm. we started mm -hmm. uh episode one is up so so brand, you're right brand, brand new, new. Uh, episode two we'll probably record next week we might even do a second episode this weekend with you that would be awesome that would be awesome cool so, Yep, all right, that's where we are. And I'll include links to all that fun stuff yeah. in the description below. Sounds great. And I'll also include uh, links in the description to my stuff, before I forget, <laughs> at Pair of Dice Paradise, uh, where you can come and join us for more YouTube fun videos about board game news and reviews and countdowns and such. 
And I want to remind everyone, too, that episodes like this are made possible by viewers like you who have been supporting the Pair of Dice Paradise pod pledge fundraising campaign. Uh, every donation helps keep the channel going and growing, and it's all appreciated. Until next time we get together, I've been Chaz Marler with special home-invaded studio guest Mark Street from Working right. Corner. Yep. Thanks, and we'll talk to you again soon. See you, folks. See, the last clap was like the perfect clap, too. That should probably be fine. It threw you off. You ruined it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>